I want to talk about catchment drainage. Now, catchment drainage is a new feature that allows the assignment or the attachment of catchment polygons to various runoff nodes. And there's several choices in what you do. You would start the tool from Tools menu, Calculate Node, Catchment Drainage. It brings up this dialog. And the choices are you can choose from nodes that lie within a catchment, for nodes that are nearest to centroids of the centroid of that catchment, nodes that are nearest a vertex on the catchment, or perhaps just all nodes in the model. And when you click in these cells, it will expand and you'll be able to grab uh, any uh, node in the model for those various catchments. In order for this to have uh, to work and you know for you to be able to see heads up what's going on, the catchments had to be expanded in the 2016 version to include a label. So uh, you'll notice in the catchments layer control panel there's a new thing called labels. And uh, you can see the label, for example, here is catchment six. So if you wanted this catchment to connect to, say, node 3, 1, you'd need to know what its name is in order to um, make that association in your mind and then, of course, make it happen in the dialog. So let me um, take you to a new model where I can show you this feature. And I think I'll spend just a couple of minutes to generally talk about catchments and catchment import as well. Some of you probably have some experience already bringing in catchments from various sources or various abilities. The gold standard would be that you would right click on the catchments layer, that you would import them from GIS, say a, for example a GIS shapefile. And I'll just sort of start that process here. I won't finish it because I want to show you the real need for the catchment drainage tool. Uh, and then you would go to import them, and then the gold standard would be that your polygons actually have values like the drainage area, that those polygons have data to say which node they are drained to. And so, of course, in this example that I have right now, that is the case, where I actually have on my shapefile the name of the node that it's supposed to drain to. And so it will directly do that if you pick the node name. And then, of course, you can even pick the catchment position um, from attributes. You know, if you wanted it to be position 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Or, of course, if you don't care about the position, uh, then the first one would be in number 1. And the second one that would come in would be in position 2 if you choose append as new. Well, I'm going to go with the assumption that this wouldn't exist, and so if you did that, if you didn't have that ability to import, then you would be importing these catchments. They would reside in the model, but they wouldn't have an assignment or an attachment to any node. Uh, another way that that might happen is in a CAD file. You can see, for example, in traced in green are the catchment boundaries. That happens to be part of the CAD file that I have loaded. It's possible to import from CAD uh, the geometry to our own geometry, meaning like a circle or point could become a node, a line could become a link, and a polygon could become a catchment. So I'm going to select none. I have a specific layer on this CAD file called catchments, and I'm going to use that geometry layer in the CAD file to become catchments. But there's no transfer of data in this case. I'll choose catchment, so I'm just walking through the wizard. I'll choose finish, and what will happen is it will create for me 10 polygons in the catchments layer. Let me go to my P for the previous view. Uh, where is my model. Maybe I'll just zoom in there to that area again. So I've got the polygons now as 
specific catchments. So if I click one, you can see the vertices light up on it. And I can see that this catchment is in the model, but it's not attached. To manually attach it would be to move the cursor to the centroid, and you can click and drag, and you can say, oh, this belongs to node 31. And I will drain it as a certain um, subcatchment position. The tool to automate that association is, as I mentioned, under Tools, Node, Catchment Drainage. So this is the new tool in 2016. It may help to turn on the labels of the catchments. So let me uh, go back and do that first. So I can turn on the catchment label. So for example, catchment zero is here. I know I wanted that to go to 3.1. Number three, I also wanted it to go to 3.1 as an example. So let's return back to the tool. And now, um, looking at the image, you know, or the plan view, I'm able to see, for example, I did want catchment zero to go to node 3.1. And Notice that node 3.1 shows up as a node inside the catchment. So if I only wanted like one certain rule to apply, I could click it here and it would apply to all. So all of these catchments would be assigned to these various nodes because they happen to be found within the node catchment. But I'm going to be a little bit more choosy and more specific. I'm going to say, well, for node 3.1, I do want that assigned based on the fact that it's in the catchment. Uh, I also want catchment 3 to be uh, attached to node 3, 1, and so it doesn't fall within any of these rules, like it's not within it, it's not near a centroid, it's not even the nearest to a vertex, so in fact, I'm going to pick the option that it's all nodes in model, and I'm going to say, oh, that one goes to node 3, 1, and apply it etc. So you can pick any of these major rules, if you will, or you can go ahead and uh, manually attach it. And uh, I'll just click this and show you that it could be progressive. So I could make those assignments. And so there's only two that are connected. Perhaps I graphically pick some. And I'll say this is going to be in position one. And of course, if I went back to tools, calculate node catchment drainage. In this case, uh, it's going to echo back to me, you know, the ones that are already there. I had two, but now, of course, I've got a, a third one done. So this, uh, this tool really fills in the gap of when you are not doing the gold standard, which is already in your import is the target node. So if there is no target node, then you can start using these rules. And of course, it is possible to refine it later. If you pick a catchment, you could delete the catchment from node assignment. And you could make it then, of course, to another node if you so choose. And why do we do this? Well, one of the reasons is we want to derive catchment areas. So another tool for the node is to calculate the catchment areas. So any connected catchments to a node will actually return their areas to those parts of the dialog. So I'll just follow up with that command. And if I go to, for example, the junction node, I'll be able to see that it has filled in the area based on the area of this catchment and it had been to scale, so it reports the right number of hectares that are going to go to that, to that node.